Hi there, this is David Hillier and I'm going to give you a short video on variations of the capital asset pricing model. In particular, I will be focusing on two variations, the consumption CAPM and the CAPM with human capital. So these are the two common variations, but there are actually a number of other variations. I only focus on these two in my textbook, and therefore that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's remind ourselves what uh, the capital asset pricing model is. Well, it consists of a number of inputs. So we can start off with the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is the return that you would get on a government short-term security, like a treasury bill. You also have the beta, and the beta is the a measure of the systematic risk of the security, but it's also uh, a measure of uh, the covariance uh, between the security return and the market return. And if uh, a security has a very high uh, covariance with the market return, then you're going to see a higher beta. And that effectively says that when the market moves in one direction, the return on the security uh, moves in the same direction uh, and maybe be very sensitive to that movement. And that would be reflective of a higher beta. If you had a low beta, then you wouldn't expect to see much movement in the security return with movements in the market. And then you have the expected return on the market itself. And that market uh, portfolio is a portfolio of all available investable financial assets. And so you need to have that population of all investable assets. Uh, and they have to be financial assets. Now, in the, the last lecture, when I sp had criticisms of the CAPM, I said that the portfolio that we use um, to proxy for that market portfolio can really sometimes only be a subset of all available financial assets. And that was a criticism. But <clears throat> that's the, the CAPM that we've got, and it's the, the very common and very well-known uh, model used to uh, estimate uh, or predict expected returns on a security. So let's move on to the first model, and that's the consumption CAPM. Now, you'll see from the formula that it's actually very similar to the CAPM itself. And in fact, looking at that formula, you would you say there's no difference. Well, the difference actually comes in the beta measure. The beta is estimated differently uh, with the consumption CAPM. And what you're looking at is you're looking at how returns on securities co-vary with consumption growth or growth in consumption. And the idea behind this is that, well, the, the normal CAPM now, the standard CAPM looks at how the, 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 your wealth varies with uh, movements in the market because ultimately the, the, the security return is a measure of your increase or decrease in your wealth. And theoretically, you might argue that, well, the thing that's really important is not your overall wealth, it's actually how much you can consume that's the important thing. And, and if that's the important thing, then that's what's going to be priced. And when we consider risk of securities, then we're really considering how the security co-varies with growth and consumption, or the security return varies with growth and consumption. So if you've got high consumption growth, then does that mean the security return is going to be very high? That would be a high consumption beta. Or if you didn't see the security return moving much with the consumption growth, then you would say it would be a low consumption beta. And the consumption cap M really just substitutes that beta, the consumption beta, in for the normal uh, beta that we would get for the cap M. The big issue with this is that you actually need to have measurements of consumption growth, and uh, it's really difficult to get that. So the model is good from a theoretical perspective, but maybe not so good for from a, an empirical perspective. And when I do research, uh, looking at papers uh, on the consumption cap, um, the papers tend to be looking at measures of consumption growth uh, and whether uh, you know th these are uh, lead to valid predictions with uh, the security return. So that's consumption cap M. We're now going to look at the 
CAPM with human capital. And this the idea behind this model of CAPM is that, well, you know, we with the CAPM, we're really only talking about financial assets, investable financial assets. But in actual fact, we can invest in other things. We don't need to just invest in financial assets. We can invest in, say, for example, property, or we can invest in people. We can, you know, we can grow the value of people by in building up their skills and build, building up their human capital. And so we really have two components to uh, this overall market return. So instead of just narrowing our choice to financial um, investable assets, the whole population of financial investable assets, but still narrowed to that. Uh, group, then we really are looking at all assets, both financial assets and non-financial assets. And when we we think about the market return, then the market return is actually just made up of the return on non-financial assets and the return on financial assets. And the delta here is the weight of the non-financial assets in the overall economy. Uh, the delta plus one plus minus delta adds up to one, so that means that's the weightings of a portfolio must add up to one. And this is a bit like a portfolio, actually. It's, um, it is it is a portfolio. It's a portfolio of non-financial assets and financial assets. So when we then say, well, okay, let's look at um, the return on a security. Well, we can say the return on a security is equal to the risk-free rate plus uh, the beta. Let's go back to this one here. The risk-free rate plus the beta times the return in the market minus the risk-free rate. Well, that market return now is a portfolio of non-financial assets and financial assets. And so therefore, we can decompose the market return into its component parts. And this is very much like the expected return in a portfolio, except that portfolio consists of uh, the assets in the financial sense and the assets in the non-financial sense. And we therefore have betas for both the financial assets and the non-financial assets. And this beta naught here is, is the equivalent to a, a zero risk, uh, the return on a zero risk uh, portfolio. So the expected return on uh, the cap M with human capital is simply uh, the following. Again, this is a theoretical model. Um, you know, if we were to try and get measures of or historical data on non-financial assets it's incredibly difficult to do so and so therefore it is has more value from a theoretical sense than from an empirical sense so these are two measures two variations of of cap m they, they have more value as i've just said from a theoretical perspective rather than using actually uh, real data but i do think they provide some nice insights and they also give some of the, um, maybe, or they show some of the weaknesses in the standard cap -in. Thank you very much.